probably when I was going to high school. Uh, my dad had a 1986 900, 300,000 miles, kind of a beater, but just something we had, and that was the car that I got to drive to school every day. Nobody else had it. Nobody else had anything remotely close to that. Not even in our town, really. We were the, probably one of three people in the entire town that had one, so I was like the kind of unique factor of it. Pretty early on, I got interested into like the Saab Central stuff when I was trying to fix things, and I saw what other people were doing, it kind of got me interested. So the first one I had was my dad's Saab that was kind of handed down to me. Dark gray, had scratches all over it. Interior was the cloth interior, it was falling apart. Barely could get up to 60 miles an hour if you're punching that thing as hard as you could go. I mean, it was just a trooper kind of just car we've had for so long that it's uh, it just kind of stuck around and uh, we never needed to get rid of it. Until one day when I was driving to school and somebody had T-boned me and it was only $1,500 worth of damage but that was enough to total the car out. So uh, uh, we kept it for a little while longer after, tried to get it running again and we couldn't find really many of the parts around here because they're not too common. And then that was when I bought my first Saab going into college and it was a 2000 95 Aero, manual of course. It was green, scarab green, missing the front lip like they all are. Uh, beige interior, kind of falling apart. Uh, picked it up for $3,000 and then I, when I went to go register at the DMV for it, I found out that the car had been in Mexico and there's this whole other issue with that, but uh, we eventually got it figured out. That one was the first car I ever built. I pulled the engine out of that one. I uh, did forged pistons, I did the manifolds, I did the 20T turbo, kind of just built it up, and that was really when I got into building my own cars versus just watching them on uh, YouTube or on TV shows and stuff like that. So I am on my one, two, fifth sob. The first one was the high school one, handed down. We had had that one since 1988. Then I bought mine when I went to college. That was seven years ago. And then I had that one for about five years until I spun a couple bearings on it and then I, it wasn't worth me fixing. And I'd already you know, paid the car off and all that stuff. So I wanted to go bigger and better. And I'd always heard of the V6 uh, arrows and that sort of thing. And so that was when I picked up this one. Uh, that was actually just a, almost a year and a half ago from San Diego. Six speed manual, beautiful, no issues, no dents, no scratches, nothing. Uh, not even the paint peeling off any of the buttons inside, it was immaculate. I immediately went and bought everything I could from JZW, and I had the intercooler, I had a 22T turbo, I had injectors, I had downpipe, I had a midpipe, I had uh, tune obviously of about 380, 390 wheel horsepower, so whatever that calculates out to, 420, 430 uh, horsepower at the crank. And that was super fun for about the first four days before my car blew a two or cracked two pistons. Uh, so that's what I've been working on over here actually, that was a couple months ago. And when that one blew up, then I needed to get another car because it was my daily driver. So I bought my parents 2008-93 automatic based, most boring bland car you could think of. Um, but I needed a car and they didn't need that car so they were gonna uh, sell it to me. So I got that one. Almost a couple days after I bought that, maybe even a week, I had uh, found an ad in San Francisco on Craigslist for a Saab that wasn't running. It was rear-ended, it was smashed up in the front and in the back and the hood was all dented, the trunk was all dented, it didn't look like it came with anything, the interior was kind of nasty. Um, but the guy's asking $3,000 for it, and it was one that, that, this is the top of the line saw that I could ever imagine. It's all-wheel drive, it was a manual, and it was a V6. Uh, I ended up talking him down to about $2,000, to $2, and uh, it didn't run at the time. He said he didn't know what was wrong with it. Uh, it turns out the battery was just extremely dead, so he charged it overnight. I flew up to uh, San Francisco and drove the whole thing down. Uh, we had some scratched up bumpers, we had... Uh, some headlights taped in place. There's no screws holding those on for the entire whatever 400 miles down. Um, I had the gas gauge was uh, was not fully functioning at the time. And then I just finished buying actually this is the Griffin front bumper. I bought one of those and I have a new rear bumper that I was able to find on Craigslist. Uh, getting them painted this week and hopefully it won't look so ugly anymore. So the main reason why I'm still doing it, uh, like now I obviously can afford you know something nicer than a $2,000 crashed up car, but um, I guess the main thing was that there's so much that I can do with this that I wouldn't feel comfortable doing with maybe a more expensive car. Um, 
I, I can toy around with it and I feel comfortable with what I'm doing and I'm not afraid that I'm gonna do something wrong. Or if I do do something wrong and I'm not, I'm not afraid that it's gonna be like a $50,000 repair or some crazy thing. And if, uh, I guess in the end, if I end up, you know, not having it or if I total it or whatever, you know, I'm not out nearly as much time and money as I could be for other cars. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, I've never really had an issue with finding parts or finding cars for sale that I could, you know, potentially fix up or do, do whatever, because mainly in the end, it's a hobby for me. Um, so I imagine that I'll still have the all-wheel drive uh, for a while until I absolutely destroy it. Uh, I have big plans for that one, building out the engine and bigger turbo aftermarket, all that stuff. Um, the only other project that I have wanted to do for a while that's just kind of in the back of my head is build a drag racing classic 900. I thought it would be a perfect body shell for it, you know, the trunk is nice and open, uh, tons of room to throw in the beefy engine, whatever it is, make a rear wheel drive. I thought that would be kind of a cool little build to do. Um, uh, other than that, I think I just keep those two cars. I have no real connection to any car that, you know, like, oh, I grew up with this car, I want to keep that one, or I want to find one exactly like it with, you know, 20,000 miles, because I know I just beat on it anyways, and all the enthusiasts and purists and stuff would probably not be too happy that I'm out here just thrashing it left and right. That, that, that's pretty much the extent of my plans, I think. The brand's not dead to me yet, so, you know, I'll keep, I'll keep with it for as long as I can. <laughs>